it's definitely dessert in the glass. We've had people be like, what are the calories on these? We're like, it's a dessert beer. It's beer. <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> Calories don't exist. <laughs> it's the backpacking beer adventure. Let's get hopping. Uh, right now we're heading to the highway. Bozeman's been fun as hell. And it's uh, time to roll on towards Missoula. Stick our thumbs out, see what happens. Let's do it. Got some short rides at first, some good rides, and then we actually got a ride from a guy who helped build Map Brewing, where we filmed, so that was incredible. So uh, Am, AKA Sourdough, is a guy I met when I first started hitchhiking. I haven't seen him in nine years. Thought he still lived in Bozeman, we hit him up, and he lived in uh, Helena, which is an alternative route to get to Missoula, so it was like, hell yeah. Got a ride from a super nice guy, who works in the National Guard, going to Missoula. It's always good when you hop in a car and someone's going an hour plus exactly to your destination. Tomorrow, we're filming at Kettle House. They got a big amphitheater, one of the bigger venues, music venues in Montana, from what I understand. So, here we go. This is our third facility we've had. So, we, at one time, we had three operational breweries, uh, two in Missoula, then this one out here. Pretty cool. We built this one about four years ago because we couldn't get enough beer to the state of Montana. So we couldn't keep up with everything. Uh, and we've always been focused on just getting all our beer to all of Montana first. Yeah. And we just couldn't do it with the two facilities we had. And we were, we were about at like 15,000 barrels and we couldn't get there. So we bought the property out here. Pretty damn impressive. Yeah, right yeah. Built this building and within the first year, you know, we were able to get to like 18,000 barrels-ish, maybe 19, I think. We were able to get beer to every corner of the state of Montana, which was like our number one goal. With the Montana laws, only things we can serve here is what we've brewed or made here. Really? So everything on tap here was Was made here. in this facility, yeah. Okay. The brew house is pretty awesome. JV Northwest, four vessel, 60 barrel system. How often are you brewing? Five days a week right now, and we can do 180 to 190 barrels on this system between 5 a.m. and about 8.30 p.m. With the four vessel system, we're able to put a brew right behind it and keep beers going really well. So I have two brewers that'll, one come in at 5 a.m., work his shift, then a guy will finish at nine. So we're not quite doing all through the night yet, which is really good for the crew, keeps everyone fresh. Morale is nice. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're still keeping three day weekends for everyone here, so that's kind of nice. Uh, we're on the cusp of having to change it, but you know, we're gonna hold on to that as long as we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. might as well. Have you been here since the beginning, or? I am coming up on nine years in September. Kettle House has been an amazing company and you know I owe everything in my beer career to them because I had no experience when I got hired and I got hired as a part-time keg washer nine years ago. Really no home brewing? Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Just I love to drink craft beer you know and I was, yeah, yeah, it's started. a north side tap from quite a bit and then yeah. kind of just learned everything I know through Kettle House and they just let me learn and teach me everything I've learned throughout the nine years. And How yeah. long have they been around all together? Uh, we are coming up on our 26th anniversary. So we got a really cool history. Uh, Tim O'Leary, our owner and founder, Southside, it used to be a U-brew. So he used to have people come in and he'd like teach them to brew and do the whole thing and teach them everything. And then he'd help them bottle their beers they made and everything. But, you know, eventually it wasn't profitable. And he was like, all right, well, you know, I'm gonna just start brewing my own beer and serving pints. Uh, another cool thing is we were the first Montana brewery to put craft beer into a can in Montana. That's cool. Especially with the 16 ounces, it was kind of different too. You know, we do the yeah it stands out. Yeah, we do the four pack 16 ounce and the eight pack 16 ounce can. Oh, I didn't notice that the eight pack. That's pretty rare. Yeah, yeah, eight pack 16 ounces. It's pretty awesome. Are uh, you from Montana yourself? Or? Yes. Uh, born and raised and then I went out a little bit here and there during college to a few different places but I always came back home and then this was truly my dream job was <laughs> to work here got that and then I have the real dream job position now uh, yeah. being the head brewer out here so it's it's pretty great We have 780 barrel fermenters, 390 barrel fermenters, 460 barrel fermenters, 145 barrel fermenter, and two 15 barrel fermenters. So we got quite the variety. You got options. Yeah, man. to play around with, which has been really nice. 
a lot of our barrel aged whiskey, beer, we put in bottles, 22 ounce bombers and wax dip and stuff and we have those for sale. You just have a little bottler? Yeah, we have a bottler in between the tanks. We have a, we just got a new two head purge and fill system so we can fill our bombers for all our whiskey beer and everything. So it's really nice. We used to have a single head fill. I think last year we did like 8,000 bottles on that thing and it was it was time to get Genius. an upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> for time, time consumption and just from a quality standpoint too, you know. We just started a seltzer experiment with some seltzer stuff. We got one in the tap room that we're selling right now, another one in the small 15 barrel tank. So it was a hard pill to swallow to have to do it, but you know. Seltzer. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's all right, but. it's all right. We're on board now. It, it just took us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, there. yeah. I'm sure once you start geeking out on it, you're like, oh, okay. This yeah, is like a puzzle. And totally. And it's just a lot more, to, it's just a lot of different stuff to learn, you know, because it's yeah. such a different product than beer. It's good to have that option in your tap room because you get so many people that come in maybe with some friends and they don't have an option of anything to drink, especially at a brewery like here where everything we sell has to be made here. Give that seltzer option and the gluten free option. We do make our own soda, so we do sell that, make our own soda. We make our own root beer. And have that for kids and other people that want a non-alcoholic option, right? Besides water too, so. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for pouring these beers. Yeah, absolutely. So we got one first flight kind of here going on. Uh, so I know you guys had had cold smoke before. Yep. Uh, so I wanted to pour a different version. So the vanilla cold smoke we got here. So it's just basically cold smoke where we've added some vanilla puree. Uh, Kind of gives it a little more sweetness, it smells uh, a great. little more candy flavor to it, I think. Uh, um, but yeah, it's a big hit amongst the uh, tap room here. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it, delicious. It, it pairs really, really well with it. Um, we do a lot of fun stuff with the cold smoke. We've done a, we do blackberry cold smoke in the tap room. We do coffee cold smoke. We've done chocolate cold smoke. Coffee cold uh, smoke, chocolate cold. Oh, yeah, right. exactly. Every, anything, you can, everything you can think of, kind of that. The Scotch ale cold smoke base is perfect for anything. I think. Yeah. With a little more sweetness and get some different fruit flavors in there. Uh, yeah, we've done multiple of things with cold smoke. I think for Valentine's Day, I'm trying to remember what we did. I think we did a strawberry chocolate cold smoke for Valentine's Day. Tap room only, really quick. Uh, yeah. So, so it's kind of constantly fun. rotating through the. The alternative cold smoke. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And people love the difference. You know, cold smoke's our best seller and people love cold smoke in general. So just adding a little thing to it, which is really easy. We're just uh, putting some puree, yeah. you know, into the keg, making a one half barrel or one five gal just for a weekend or a special event. It's kind of fun. You talked about barrel aged white stout. Oh, uh, yep. Yep. The white stout in general is a beer that we've done just recently. Um, and the whole white stout style, in my opinion, is very new you know, just to have the stout flavor with the clear color. Uh, and then we barrel aged it in the last two years too and realized how popular it was too. So we've kept that around. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good whiskey notes to it. Uh, great coffee notes. Uh, there's uh, chocolate in the white stout, coffee beans in the white stout, uh, vanilla puree in the white stout, and then, you know, aging that in some whiskey barrels for a good four to six months just yeah. is a perfect combo for a, almost a little cocktail, right? Yeah, yeah. so you just use the whole bean. Yep, yep, we use whole bean from a local coffee roaster here in Missoula. Yeah. Um, and then for barrel aging, uh, we have a really good partnership with Dry Fly Distilling out of Spokane, Washington. Okay. Uh, and so all our, a lot of our whiskey beer is aged in their barrels because um, they just, they have a great barrel. Um, obviously they make what I consider really, really good world-class whiskey. And so it pairs really well with all the beers we've had. And, you know, it's nice when you can call a distiller and be like, hey, what do you got for barrels? And he's like, all right, how many you want? <laughs> and I'll send <laughs> yeah. them over. So that's- oh, this all comes this together great. perfect. Yeah. Nice. Man, that's delicious. <laughs> yeah, so another cool one I poured. Um, I don't know if you'd heard about this yet. So we did a collaboration beer, just did it with Pearl Jam. So- oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so that's been pretty awesome. Uh, the bass player, Jeff, lives in Missoula full-time and is born and raised in Montana too. They wanted to collab and then it's a big fundraiser for him building a new skate park because he built skate parks all across the state for kids and for grown-ups whoever wants to skate, right? So we collabed with Pearl Jam. We made a very light pale ale that we dry hopped with lemon drop hops. Uh, comes in at 5%. Uh, so yeah, we just put it in cans. Just went out to distribution last week. Just got on the shelves this week. So uh, it's pretty awesome. And then a percentage of all the sales of everything we're making is a uh, going to building a new skate park, I believe in Superior, Montana. So that's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah, pretty it's awesome. Good beer too. Uh, yeah, it's crisp. it's crisp malt body and then the lemon drop hops really have, I think like a lemony zesty. I think this is the most I've it. seen those lemon drop hops like come through. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And the people have been all about the lemon drop hops and we have not used them in a long time. And 
and haven't really used them much and it just came together that oh this will, I think this will be a great beer for the summer let's let's really go for focusing on those lemon drop hops and seeing how they come through so really excited about the collaboration it's been pretty wild oh yeah we just collabed with Pearl Jam one of the biggest rock bands in the world this Hell is crazy yeah. yeah so many phone calls and so many emails from people all over the world wanting us to ship them this beer you know before we get into like hoppy beers and stuff, I poured the double haul. English style IPA, a little more on the malt side compared to what IPAs are now all the time, right? Uh, and then it's just good classic Cascade hops all the way through it. Uh, so it's still a great beer, it's still selling well, uh, and I think it's just holding its legs. Still still fighting the fight against the way more hoppy beers, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of people have been uh, getting away from this style, but it has its place. Oh, for sure, it's, and I think it's gonna make a comeback too, I really do. This beer's been just such a huge hit for us. The Shady New England IPA, all citra hops, a very smidge of mosaic in it. Uh, the uh, aroma just bursts. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, we carve it a little lower, so it's really nice and easy to drink. Yeah, that's just solid. <laughs> yeah, no, this beer's been a great huge hit, and it's actually just picked up every year in sales and distribution levels for us, which has been really awesome to see. So it's a it's a fun one. It can catch up. It can catch up with you quick with how yeah. good it tastes. Right? I was about it's to say 7%. this one. This one would be good on this a raft. Beer, yeah. You'd be like three in. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, that's delicious. Next one I put in, kind of the same thing we did with the cold smoke and made a vanilla cold smoke. We made a pog shady, so we put pog puree in it, which is passion fruit orange guava puree. Oh, and we dosed the, the pog, cake, so, so we even made it juicier uh, than it was with those hops, and so it has a big fruit flavor. It's one of our best sellers by far. People yeah. come in strictly for this just one the now smell to get on it. Just... Yeah, you can get the fruit aromas, like a little, feels like you're on a Hawaiian beach almost. That is just such a big, fresh, juicy flavor. Oh, I feel yeah. like I'm just taking a big bite of some like tropical fruit and I just discover it's like dripping on my shirt or something. Yeah, I'm no. like picturing the whole thing. That is awesome. The next one here is the Fish On, which I talked about with their Montana Juicy Pale. Good old great malt bill, not very much, not much bitterness, but then a ton of those New, Ze New Zealand hops all the way through. 4.8%, uh, so it's really sessionable, really nice, uh, easy drinking. Oh yeah. yeah, especially compared to the, the last two, it's got more of that uh, clean kind of flavor yep. coming through. Crushable. <laughs> Could fish all day with this and not be in trouble. Yeah, and this beer's been a huge hit. We just launched it last year. It's only a summer release. It was so popular during last summer that we moved it this year to a full time four packs and eight packs, so it'll be kind of fun to have this all year round now for us. will be really cool. Yeah. Killing it across the board. Yeah, and then this one, really good classic. We call it the Northwest IPA, but it's a classic Western American style IPA. You know, it's, yeah. got, it's got the Chinooks, the Mosaics, the Citra, the Simcoe, mixtures of fruitiness, melon, dank, all of it work together. Uh, I can five, smell the dank and, and the melon. Percent, yeah. For the longest time too, just in Kettle House history, we really didn't do much dry hopping ever. Really? And so, yeah, <laughs> uh, we were just doing so much cold smoke all the time too, right? We didn't need to yeah. worry about like, what are we gonna do with hops? So did you kick off a lot of that, or did it get started and then it, you came in? It was just kind of the old head brewer. The old head brewer before me uh, came from Chicago, and he was really into it. They were dry hopping everything over there. And he came up with this. I've tweaked this one a little bit. Me and my crew have getting into the dry hop game and getting some hoppy beers going. Oh yeah, that melon you mentioned comes through right away. Mm -hmm. It's yep. crisp like the last one. Yep. But more of that melon and yeah, just just kind of different hop profiles. Like yep. Fish On and Northwest both are that crisp, good finish. We centrifuge both of them so they're clear, yep. uh, and that helps with the crispness a little bit too. And then tad more sweetness with this one. Yeah. Uh, this is another killer. Yeah. <laughs> so this this Northwest has been really great, and it's definitely a definitely a production favorite, brewer favorite for sure. So man, sounds like you've just been killing it since you got on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been doing great. We, like I said, innovation's been up. We've been making a lot of great beers, doing beers across the whole style spectrum too, you know, getting everybody a little bit of, a little bit of anything they might want, no matter what it would be, you know? Yeah. So cool. So yeah, that's kind of yeah. all I got on that. So cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks for showing us around. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. for pouring some beers. Yeah, for it's sure. Been incredible. Yeah. Good Thank to hear. You. Next stop, Barbarian Brewing in Boise. We are, I don't know where we are, to be honest. Chalice, Chalice, Idaho. Stayed with a friend of mine, Ed, yesterday, who I met on Trust Roots. Gave us a ride down to Hamilton today, and then we got a ride from this really awesome woman who's picking up a puppy somewhere in this area. So that was a good two, two and a half hour ride to start the day. Going along the river the whole time, absolutely gorgeous. We got about four hours of driving to get to Boise, so we'll see how many rides and actual hours that takes, but. Let's uh, keep it moving as always.
Hovley with Barbarian Brewing here in Boise, Idaho. I am the business manager and co-founder and co-owner alongside my husband, James, uh, who is our head brewer. Beautiful space, this building is like 120 years old, I think. Oh, wow. So it took a lot of work to kind of revamp it into what it is. Um, but we've got local art photography from a local artist, Rob Hart. We've got graffiti artwork from another local duo, uh, Sector 17. 24 barbarian beers on draft. Pretty cool spot to hang out. We don't really distribute very much. Our main focus is through fresh rotating batches for our tap rooms only. And then if we have extra beer, we'll sell it to craft beer bars around town. Being able to do that, we can focus on a really diverse range and keep our sour barrel program going. So all of our barrel aged sours, most of them are spontaneous uh, fermented beers. And then we also have a clean barrel program and then a clean beer section that's IPAs, ice cream ales, kettle sours, candy gozas, stout, Belgian ales, whatever our brewers feel like making for the week. We try and keep a couple dessert beers on at all times. Uh, we always have four IPAs and then about six to 12 sour beers. Uh, so we brew within kind of those parameters that we've set up over the years that seem to customers really like. Um, so like right now we have an orange creamsicle dessert Berliner Weiss that's a little bit sour and tart and it tastes like summer heaven. It is awesome. Nice. It's our fastest moving beer right now. Really? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> have you brewed that before or is this the... No, this is the first time. Oh, okay. um, and then I think uh, bef after that we'll have like a strawberry shortcake beer coming out. Um, okay. So we kind of try and brew for the season and then go from there. We've got like a mojito sour, saltwater taffy goza, um, a couple barrel aged sours, just a whole eclectic range of stuff. Awesome. So, well, yeah. let's, uh, let's try some. Perfect. <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs>
to-go food to your table here at Barbarian. That's great. I've seen some breweries do that yeah. before. It's genius. And then Forenza Pizza, which is not even a block away, and same type of thing. Um, they run your pizza over to the tap room, and oh, great. it's worked out awesome. Yeah. People ever just come with their own little picnic oh, yeah. of food? People bring in their own food all the time. We don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we had a kitchen, well. we'd mind, but no, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So this is our dessert Berliner Weiss. Lactose. Smell the vanilla. Yes, vanilla, 400 pounds of Cara Cara oranges, and then soured. Oh yeah, it's like a nice <laughs> little ride too. Yeah. It's got the body to it, it's great. Yeah. With the vanilla and the lactose. I'm sure the lactose plays a big part in that. Yeah, we actually put it in our ice cream ale series can because it, it's kind of both. It's a dessert Berliner and an ice cream ale, and it's definitely dessert in the glass. We've had people be like, what are the calories on these? We're like, it's a dessert beer. It's a beer. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> calories don't exist. <laughs> you said this is the best seller right now too? Uh, at the moment, yes. It's our best moving beer. Put it out in the middle of winter, it probably wouldn't be, but we've had yeah. an exceptionally warm June, so I think it's perfect for right now. Yeah. People just want dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get involved in the brewing as um, well? I don't. I stick to the business side and the taproom side. I'm the no person, unfortunately. Gotcha. So because James is the idea guy, he has all of these crazy ideas. So I feel like I'm the person that has to like bring them back to earth sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Like that's Fair awesome. Enough. Can we tweak it down? Just a little? <laughs> <laughs> I think you were telling me before we were rolling, you actually got him his first homebrew kit. I did, yeah. For his 25th or 26th birthday, I got him a homebrew kit. And that's how he got started. All started going from there. <laughs> that is going to be our Chuckles ice cream ale. Lactose, vanilla, chocolate, peanut butter, in a gold stout base. So all of the allergens in that one for all the people who can't do. <laughs> yeah, that's delicious. Again, nailed the body on like all these beers. That's how you can always tell a good brewery. Like, uh, it's thanks. clean and good body to it. Yeah. So, yeah they know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> And we like to think, we know that some of these beers aren't for everyone, but we try and have a have beer for people who don't necessarily like beer. So um, our bartenders love to when someone comes in and they're like, I don't like beer. And they're like, we'll find you one. <laughs> yeah. Wait for it. <laughs> I never believe anyone who tells me that. I'm right. like, you just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. Nobody's shown you the, the light. <laughs> yeah. We make a maple bar, uh, a bourbon barrel maple bar stout that comes out in the winter or fall. Yeah. Um, it's like a 12% imperial stout with literally put like maple bar donuts in. Uh, <laughs> yes. the epitome of like a pastry stout. We also have our German chocolate cake, which is another like big stout that tastes like with coconut and everything in, so. I can just tell, just by seeing how rich these are, I can already envision that <laughs> <laughs> on my oh, yeah, taste Our buds. winter lineup is pretty heavy. I think at yeah. one point, in the middle of January, our average ABV on the board of 24 beers was 9%. Wow. Yeah, so there this, right now we're probably down about six, but yeah. winter is, we have, we have to be careful. It's time to have heavy beers, <laughs> <Yep>. it's winter. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. All right, so 20 is, I told you I was creaky. Creek style beer with cherries. This one is a spontaneously fermented beer that we then barrel aged for probably two years and then added a couple hundred pounds of tart cherries too. Yeah, that is exactly what I was hoping it would taste like. <laughs> <laughs> tart, clean, delicious. All right, the So 19, beer. yes, is RDO 3. So this is the third variation of RDO we've done over the years. RDO is the Celtic bear goddess. The base is a Belgian brown ale and then barrel aged and soured with brett and lacto. And then we finish it with raspberries. Raspberries. Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's by far the most complex. Yeah. Of the six, that's great. You get the kind of like tart, clean, and then it's like the kind of multi backbone yeah. right behind it. And man, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and the smell of the raspberries too just seals the deal. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing all these beers and Definitely. taking your time out. Yeah. This is really great. And I'll have to come back, and everybody should come back when the new breweries Definitely. built. It should be built by now, <laughs> by the time you're watching this. So if you're in Boise, man, check this place out. It's phenomenal.
Another really interesting one, especially for sours, is I can pour you a sample of Sea of Green. Um, yeah. This beer is like three years old. Um, yeah, we dry hopped it in, yeah, 2019 and they just kind of let it sour. Oh, it was Mill 95. We're yeah. going tomorrow. Sweet. That could be a good plug for Mill 95. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. So how do you get like out to Mill 95? Five. Do you literally hitchhike on the way out, or how does that work for? Yeah, we're hitchhiking there. It's, that one, that one's gonna be kind of strange because it's not like a big target like Boise. It's like specifically yeah. it's one location that no one will be going to. <laughs> so uh, that last like 10 miles or 15 miles is gonna be interesting, but Still, we'll see. It's such a similarity to DMT, and it's because there's this huge flood, and so that's we're actually just getting high on DMT by taking. People are so nice, so I got a feeling like we'll get to the exit and we'll get a ride from someone and someone will be like, oh, I can go five miles out of my way and That's cool. take you there. That kind of thing happens a lot. So. That's really awesome.